The Pro Player Stadium in Miami, Florida for the 2000 Orange Bowl between the Michigan Wolverines and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Let's join our announcers as Bama gets set to kick it off right here on ESPN Classic. All right, guys, welcome back to the FedEx Orange Bowl Pro Player Stadium in Miami. Alabama comes in at 10 and 2 having won the southeastern conference championship under the sec coach of the year mike dubose a linebacker in the 70s an assistant coach here and now the head man since 97 and on the other side longtime michigan assistant under bo Beckler, and he's got a national championship to his credit a couple seasons ago in lloyd carr these two teams met the toughest schedules in all of college football in the BCS computer rankings Alabama had the toughest schedule of all Michigan was number two Alabama came through with a 10 and 2 record Michigan 9 and 2 tough schedules one with a four game winning streak in Michigan Alabama's won five in a row including that throttle job of Florida that we did a month ago in Atlanta Alabama won the toss and deferred Michigan will get it first and that means Ryan Flugner will tee it up. And back deep, waiting for Michigan. Waller Cross. Perfect night for football in the 70s. Clear skies in Miami. And all the preparation these two teams have undergone since before Christmas and since back in August comes to a head as we're underway. Cross from the 11. Out across the 25 to about the 28 yard line. And that's where Michigan will go to work. Our FedEx starting lineups. The big eaters up front for the Wolverines, and they are Hutchinson and Backus on that left side, both all Big Ten performers. Brant Zeman and Mask round out the front five. Marcus Knights, the home run hitter. David Terrell, their leading receiver. Sean Thompson, the tight end. And as Bob said at quarterback, the undisputed leaders, Tom Brady, Aaron Shea lead the way for Anthony Thomas. And there's Brady making his final appearance in the maze and blue of Michigan. First down Wolverines from their own 29 yard line. Play action. They're going to throw back a screen the other way. Shea the fullback. And he got it out to about the 34 yard line. Pick up a five against an Alabama defense that doesn't give up much against the run. Number two in the country, thanks to these guys. Grimes and Griffin inside. King and Moorhead are the defensive ends. A rangy linebacker core led by a freshman in the middle. Salim Rashid with Merritt and Gilbert flanking him. And the secondary, also young but getting better every week. Lewis and Dixon on the corners. Spencer and Miles are the safeties. That Alabama defense is looking for a run early from Michigan. That's why Michigan came out throwing the football. Second down and five, and they'll get the run. And they meet it head on. Thomas maybe got a yard. That's it. Cornelius Griffin said hello. And it's going to bring up third down and four. Don't look for Michigan to run wide. Tom Brady's going to send his crew right up at him. Uh, Alabama, too much speed to run left and right, right up the middle. There's that Alabama defense, number two in the nation, allowing only 75 yards a game. And a third down and four as Michigan goes with a four wide outlook. And Brady will work from the gun. Blitz coming down the middle, off the hands of the intended receiver, Diallo Johnson. Incomplete. Michigan's three and out. They'll have to give it up. Well, the pass was there. Brady had the ball on the money. Dixon, number four, is a true freshman. They're going to be going at him all night. Freddie Millen's a dangerous return man. He's taken one for a touchdown this year. And Hayden Epstein, from behind him, we see the Michigan punt upcoming. High lazy kick. Millen's camps under it at the 19. Freddie Millen's 30. 35 cuts outside a shoestring tackler. He might have been off to the races as it was a 17 yard punt return. Alabama works offensively without one of the best players in all of college football. And Chris Samuels, the Outland Trophy winner and a first team All American left tackle, had made 42 straight starts, hadn't given up a sack all year, and he's out. 
sadly enough with a bad right knee and you know the big fella is missing this opportunity yeah but he'll be around on the sideline what a great uh, individual he is both he and Sean Alexander he's a fun kid to be around uh, uh, got to know him a little bit this week so Alabama good starting field position from the 37 yard line and the first snap a quick slant and a man wide Open, and Jason McCadley would have been off to the races of blown coverage by Michigan, but it's just an incomplete pass. That's, Alabama. That's there. good. Good planning and scheming there. Offense almost had a touchdown on the first play. The FedEx starting lineup, the big ones up front. Ellington takes that spot of Samuels, and Baxley will start at right tackle. Cuthbert and Red Mill are the guards, and Hogan's an excellent center. Jones, the tight end, McCadley, who just missed on that one, and Freddie Millen's the other wide out. Andrew Zhao with Dustin McClintock and Sean Alexander, the player of the year in the SEC. That's McClintock on the move, and he throws a block for Alexander, who busts it out across the 40, close to the 42-yard line, where Tommy Hendricks makes the tackle for the Michigan defense that is no slouch either. Their guys up front, Renus and Wilson inside, are tough. Hall and Williams, the leading sackers. The linebacking core, they make most of the tackles thanks to that front four. And it is a good linebacking core of Hobson, Dahane Jones, and Ian Gold. And in the secondary, Hendricks, who just made that one stop, that one safety, June the other, and Howard and Whitley are the corners. Alabama couldn't say enough about Rob Renus, the nose tackle, just disrupting everything. Five wide receivers. They had Millens at quarterback and then moved Zhao back in there, and he throws complete, but drops in his tracks as Antonio Carter by Dahane Jones. And Alabama, likewise, loses five, and it's three and out for the tie. The first play of the game, Alabama had an opportunity. They faked the wide receiver screen, and the receiver straight downfield. They do this a lot. They show this a lot against Florida in the SEC championship game. The Patrick Morgan to punt. And that's Diallo Johnson waiting on the other end. Morgan, high spiral. Johnson will call for a fair catch and take it at about the 21-yard line. Celtics at 8, followed by the Spurs and Jazz. With just under 10 minutes left in the second quarter, the Crimson Tide struck first behind a powerful drive led by running back Sean Alexander, who carried the ball five times for a total of 55 yards. We now rejoin the action with 9.33 remaining in the second quarter. Michigan trails by seven and faces second down and 10 from their own 25-yard line right here on ESPN Classic. Second and 10 here. Handoff inside at Thomas. Broke the tackle. Out across the 30 to about the 32 yard line. Jared Johnson made the stop as Anthony Thomas got seven. This is what he does best, Bob. It does. Inside running, and this is where Michigan should stay. There's too much speed from Alabama. This is the longest run of the night before this. There had been the fake punt that was uh, that Ian Gold, the linebacker, ran out of punt formation for six yards. So a third down and three for Michigan. They've got three wideouts to the top of your screen. Brady from the shotgun. Wants to throw back the other way. Does the screen to Thomas with a blocker in front. And a late flag flies in that might take away a first down. Gerald Dixon made the tackle. Flag flew from way out in the secondary. And it is a holding call that will take away a first down mission. Yep. And it was a good call. Johnson, Diallo Johnson just came back and blocked in the back. A legal block in the back, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still third down. Boy, penalties have absolutely killed Michigan. Whoops, that is holding. <laughs> this just part this of is it. the foul right there. You can't do anything about it. You want to help, but you can't do anything about it. The only thing you can do is make it worse, so you just, just back off. You could have called him for 25 yards on that one. <laughs> Brings up third down and eight. Brady, delayed blitz coming, fires across the middle, and right there to meet Marcus Knight is Marcus Spencer. 
So Alabama's defense does its job. One of Michigan's faster players being covered by a safety. I think they're matching up very nicely. The defensive coordinator, Ellis Johnson, says, I like the way we match up skill, skill wise, our defensive backs on their receivers, and it's showing here tonight. Bradley Millens rubbing his hands together back near his own 30 yard line, waiting Epstein's punt. Millens is going to have a chance. Freddie from the 31. Slipped one tackle, cut outside, got the corner. Freddie Millens down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds, and a penalty marker flies into the fray in the Alabama bench. Epstein's the guy that knocked him out of bounds. Might have been a little bit late. For those of you who may not know, Freddie Millens is, is a wide receiver, sophomore who was a high school quarterback that just do, does just about everything. He's got the speed to run back punts. He just runs around people. They've got him contained. He just outruns three or four Michigan players around the end. And when he got to that corner, it looked very reminiscent of that long one he ripped off in the SEC championship game. You yeah. don't think he's going to get there, and all of a sudden, zoop, he's down the sideline. Would you pay $35 for one pound of coffee? You can pay... Enjoy better. Zao back in at quarterback. Sean Alexander has the only score of the night. He's the tailback in the eye. Zao with a play fake's going to loft one for Bowens, and he made the catch inside the 10 down to the 9 yard line. 42 yard pass play. I'm impressed with the play calling. Charlie Stubbs, the quarterback coach, he just had a series where it was all running and he took the ball down the field. Now he fakes it to Sean Alexander and gets the ball in play action down the field. Best delivery of the night by Zao, and it's first and goal, Alabama, at the Michigan nine-yard line. He's staying one step ahead of the posse, as they say. Very good play calling, very good self-scouting. The give to Sean Alexander heading for the quarter, and he's brought down by Gold before he got to the five-yard line. So it's going to bring up second down and goal. Well, one of the Super Bowl MVPs who played for Alabama has joined us in the booth. Joe Willie Namath. Good to see you, Joe. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. They are right now. Yeah. Hey, Bob, first of all, Billy Neighbors yeah. sends his love. Uh -huh. You know, Billy uh, is uh, sitting over here, and Billy was a, a lineman for Bob that helped yeah. protect him with the Dolphins yeah. early on. He wanted to make sure I said hi to we, you, buddy. We were talking about the great Alabama offensive linemen like Samuels and uh, John Hanna and Dwight Stevenson. And I said, what about Billy Neighbors? You know, Billy. Sean Alexander walks in, touchdown Alabama. This one from six yards out. I knew I could bring him luck. <laughs> All you had to do is put a headset on. Sean Alexander goes in, standing up. Alabama leading 13 to nothing now. Well, that battle of field position and the exchange of punch in the first quarter finally goes Alabama's way as they grind it out. And Zao with a give, some good blocking up front. Cuthbert, 72. Hogan, 74. Give some credit to that offensive line to open those holes. Flutner for the extra point. Got it up and good. And the tide starting to roll, as Joe said. Second down and 21. 14 to nothing. And Watts from his own end zone. Fires deep middle, and he's got Alexander out there. First down out to the 33-yard line. Let's take a look from behind the quarterback to the left side. Right, nice, uh, nice view from behind the quarterback, what he sees. And Alexander does a nice job of catching the ball. Take a look at Renus, number 58. He was the key coming in for the Alabama offensive line. Takes two guys to block him there, but uh, Alabama moves out away from the shadow of their own end zone. Every time somebody gets something going positive, there's a penalty going negative. Well, that may have been a hold because it looked like one of the linemen had uh, Renus wrapped up. So instead of being a first down out near the 35, the line of scrimmage at the four-yard line. 
Well, this is a danger zone now. Alabama doesn't want to make a mistake with four minutes left in the half down this close to their own goal line. What a delightful man, Joe Namath, huh? Well, that was kind of special having both you guys together. Couple Hall of Famers, not a bad night. Second down, 25. Give to McClintock, the fullback, and he's only going to get to about the five, maybe the six. James Hall, and now a fired up Michigan defense wow. thanks to that penalty. And there's and a late, there's a late, late flag. Oh, I guess. Ten seconds after the play was over, that one flies in. Officials from the Pac-10 having a little conference here. I want to add our congratulations to Wisconsin for their Rose Bowl win right before our game. Here's a Dead call. Ball, personal foul on the offense. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Those fouls canceled. Down remains the same. So that one's a wash. And it's still third down from the six yard line. Mike DeBose would like to try to pick up the first down or at least give his putter a little bit of room to work. Well, Michigan defensively is going to have to do something to get the offense a kickstart here right. because they haven't done anything the entire first half. Third down at 25. There's been too many of these plays for both teams tonight. They're just going to run it up the middle. Alexander broke the first wave, got out to the 14. Boy, he looks quick tonight. Nine-yard pickup, and they did get their putters some room to work. 82 yards for Sean Alexander in the first half. And that's just rushing. Of course, that long pass that he just caught was called back with the uh, with the holding. Patrick Morgan will punt from his own end zone. Diallo Johnson waiting on it. He should get good field position out of this. High kick hit it a mile in the air. Johnson with a fair catch now has to run up on it. And I think they didn't give him the two yards necessary. The flag flies in. He made the catch anyway. Herschel Bolden got down there and got a little too close. Yeah, they're going to get the ball in positive field position. This will be the second time this half that they've gotten the ball in Alabama field position. The first time they didn't do anything. In fact, they backed up yeah. about 30 yards. Yeah, they started at the 42 and ended up back at about their own 23. They don't want to do that here and blow a chance to score before halftime. And yeah. here you see Bolden come down. you got to give that guy yeah. two yards, and he's not you even giving him two feet. You see that a lot on short punts, yep. where the Flyers on the outside expect the ball to be deeper. Michigan, 23 plays offense in the first half, only 52 yards of total offense. Brady back in at quarterback now at the 44-yard line. So a golden opportunity with 2.36 remaining in the half. And Michigan's got two timeouts remaining. Brady fires complete. Down to about the 37. I think this is what Michigan has to do. Open it up, start throwing the ball to the outside and down the field. Walker made the catch. Dixon made the stop. This is the deepest penetration now by Michigan tonight. Number four against number four, Walker and Dixon. Adam Cox helped out on the tackle. A second down and two, a pickup of eight on the pass play. Anthony Thomas hasn't gotten much going tonight from the Michigan backfield. He'll get the call here. And Alabama's there to meet him. No gain on the play again. Cornelius Griffin down low and Salim Rashid cleaned up. And you see Rashid shaking his head. Yeah. That graphic we mentioned a little earlier held without a first down on uh, five of six possessions. Great field position here. They want to get some points before halftime. Third down and two. We're down to a minute 25 and a half. Brady fires. He's got the same receiver in the same play. Walker with the first down. Walker probably has the best running ability after he catches the ball of all the receivers for Michigan. Ellis Johnson said, I think he's the best with the ball in his hands. And he got enough there to get a first down at the 30. 
Out of the shotgun. Now to under a minute 15. Brady going to fire the other way this time. Complete but a very short gain and a nice open field tackle by Milo Lewis. Johnson with the catch and hit immediately. There you are out here. He just pulled the ball out here. It's too long a throw. Watch the corner. He sees the ball coming out. If, if it would have gotten there quicker, he could have maybe broke a tackle. But by the time the ball gets out there, Lewis does a nice job of getting up and making the play. Yeah, that's good corner play right yeah. there. It'll be a second down at about seven as Brady took a timeout. Talking with the quarterback coach Parrish over there on the sideline. Now Brady on the night 11 of 14 but only 50 yards as we check in with Swanee on the sideline. Well Brad one of the things I'm noticing in this ball game is the fact that one of the reasons Michigan can't get the ball downfield is they just don't have the time to do it. Kenny King number 55 has been applying pressure all night long so the quarterbacks are sitting back now knowing that they can't get the ball deep and they're starting to jump those short passes. And I, and I fear for Michigan that they continue those short passes with the cornerback setting back. It's just a matter of time. Most cornerbacks are going to time it, come up, and try and pick one of those off, take a chance. You talk about short plays, Swanee. The longest play of the night yeah. is nine yards so far tonight for Michigan. Well, this is where he's throwing the ball behind the line. That's some screen passes and uh, nothing over 15 yards downfield. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe they need to throw it down the field. The other problem is they have Alabama has completely shut down the running game. Yep. So there's no play action involved anymore. And Alabama is just playing pass on every down. David Terrell normally a big threat at wide receiver came in having caught 61 passes for Michigan this year. And he's been a non entity as well on offense tonight for Lloyd Carr. We're a minute and four from halftime. We'll be heading down to New Orleans. John and Terry will be with Frank Beamer, the head coach of the number two team in the country. Our national halftime report, 64 seconds away, and also Gladys Knight will perform here in Miami, and we're looking forward to that. Brady, plenty of time. Now he's going deep to Terrell. Touchdown! There you go. 27 yards. They finally hooked up. They hadn't thrown downfield all night as we just showed you in that graphic. Number one is in the end zone and now the Michigan fans have something to cheer. Epstein for the point after to try to cut the lead to seven. He's got it up and good. Michigan needed points before halftime Bob and they got him. Well the defense set it up and this is where Brady is looking down here in the middle of the field. The two safeties will split and Terrell over here on this side is going to get into that circle in the center of the field. Right there he has the man beat and here's all the room to the middle of the field. Nice pitch and catch. Nice time to scan and then deliver. 44 yard scoring drive 27 of it uh, the reception by David Terrell for the touchdown and Brady for him his 17th scoring toss of the season. Freddie Millen says get it in my hands yeah. now. Mm -hmm. I'll do something before halftime. Let me show you what I can do. Epstein's got it teed up for Michigan 14 7 Alabama now. As soon as Joe Namath left the booth, Michigan scored. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Very good, partner. <laughs> and as soon as they came in, they started uh, scoring. Yep. <laughs> Epstein, a line drive. Millens over the shoulder catch. Nice grab at the two. Now he heads back the other way. And he got across the 20 anyway, out to about the 22 yard line. 51 seconds till halftime now. And Alabama with the ball at its own 22 yard line. They're going to give it to him again. Alexander. All wrapped up. Only about a two yard game. Andrew Zow back in at quarterback. Michigan is a come from behind team. They have come from behind several times this year. In fact, nine of their 11 games were very close, within seven points. Yep. 
So they, they're used to playing in tight games. They won seven of those games that they were behind of the 11. Mm -hmm. And let's see, the first half is going to come to a close on that carry. And it's been a Sean Alexander half. We showed you his numbers. He's accounted for both of Alabama's touchdowns. And the leading coach, Mike DeBose with Lynn Swan. Swanick. Coach DeBose, the scoreless first quarter, but that second quarter, the offense opened up. What happened in the second quarter? What did you see to open up the offense? Well, we tried some things early, trying to see how uh, Michigan would align a different personnel group and different types of movement. And we came back and uh, had a feel for what they might do and then started calling some plays, got the running game established. We got to, we got to uh, stop uh, shooting ourselves in the foot. Way too many penalties. Comment on how your offensive line has been able to block Rob Renus and play without Chris Samuels. Well, again, uh, our offensive line is playing well when we don't get the penalties. We've got to get our hands inside and then uh, quit shooting ourselves in the foot and allow ourselves to go play. Uh, we're playing good when we don't get the penalties. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, good luck Ian. in the second thank half. You. The right. leading coach, Alabama's Mike DeBose, 14-7 to over Michigan. That's our halftime score of the FedEx Orange Bowl. Brad, that's when Bob Greasy back with you, 14-7 Alabama. Penalty mark, first half on both sides, but the two guys we talked about at the top of the show have produced touchdowns for both teams. They have. Uh, Brady threw one at the end of the half, Sean Alexander. Offense is not playing well. The game is still in the balance. I think the defense is going to have to turn the ball over to help the offenses, and the special teams may come into play if the offenses don't, don't improve. There's a guy that you just keep expecting could light the scoreboard up at any minute. He his one punt return set up the second Alabama touchdown. Hey, Nepstein's been a busy punter for the most part, a kicker as well. And he is set to start the third quarter from Miami. Here we go. And it will be Freddie Millens from the one. Across the 20, pop pretty good. A penalty marker flies in. Probably an illegal block on the kick return, which would take away decent field position by Alabama. And as they check the penalty, Lynn Swan caught up with Lloyd Carr, the Michigan head coach, just moments ago. Lloyd, let's first talk about your defense and how you guys can stop that offensive line for Alabama and Sean Alexander. Well, I think the first thing we have to do Lynn, is we've got to be able to uh, throw the football better. We obviously are having a hard time running it, but the most disappointing thing is the number of penalties. We've stopped ourselves, and uh, we're going to have to play our best half of football. Alexander's doing a great job, but we're in this ball game. Well, Lloyd's not going to like the first penalty of the third quarter. <laughs> Went against his team after that kick return, and so it's all the way out to the 40-yard line. I'm sure that's one of the things he preached about at halftime was the, the number of penalties. That's got to drive you crazy. One play into the third quarter, he's got more headaches, and Alabama with a lead, and the ball all the way out to the 40. And now Rob Renis just lets the center have it. Paul Hogan, who's a good one. <laughs> Renis, the captain, a senior, 290 pounder out of Highland, Michigan. And, uh, an All American, a, a four time academic All Dead Big ball. Ten. Offsides on the defense. We haven't called his name much Five tonight. Penalty. Still first down. He now. does, Renis does the dirty work. Does he right? ever? There comes another flag. And even the fans starting to boo a little bit here. They're sick of flag football. Uh, it's getting a little sloppy. Dead ball. False start. So the five they On got, the they gave back. Five yards, still first down. And it goes back to the original line of scrimmage, so first and ten. Our Morgan Stanley Dean winner first half statistics, the total yardage there, 156. <laughs> not much. Not much. If you like offense, 96 yards for Michigan in the first half is not good. Ten total first downs and uh, Look at those third down, third down conversions. conversions. Not, not good at all. Two for 13 between the two teams. First and ten, back at the original line of scrimmage. Carter in motion. They fake the handoff pitch to Alexander. It's a fumble. And Michigan's got it. Nope, still squirting out of there. And it goes out of bounds. Michigan had two cracks at it, and the ball just kept coming out of there like a bar of soap. It looked like Whitley had it for long enough at first, and then the ball came out. And it finally goes out of bounds way back at the 21-yard line. This, another look. this drives coaches nuts. Both on offense for Alabama and now defensively, they're just screaming, just get on it. 
No, he never had it. Nope. Whitley never had it. And Alexander scooped it. Alabama got another late shot right there, and it was not to be. And yes, bounds. and yes, they do have drills defensively on recovering balls. They do it every day in practice. Second and 29 now. They need to get to the midfield strike for a first down. Alexander dropped in the backfield. Nice play by Dahani Jones. But Sean Alexander in the first half was the offense for Alabama. He kind of spread it out. He uh, ran to the left as much as to the right. Let's get the breakdown on him. Total 84 yards in the first half. Five rushes, 80, 48 yards. Six rushes up the middle. And four rushes to the right, and that's where he got the two touchdowns. Right. One of five yards and one of six. Now it's third and 31. And Alexander's out of there as they go to the four wide out setup for Andrew Zhao. Zhao sets and going deep. Got a man out there. Any penalty flags? They got tangled up a little bit. Jason McCadley had a flag down. No flag. No flag down. No flag. But I like the call, Brad. Go ahead and take a shot. Throw it down the field exactly what you were looking for and I was looking yep. for was the possibility of an interference or a holding, which is an automatic first down. And now Patrick Morgan's got a punt. They had great starting field position at the 40. And they end up snapping in this one at the 19. Bringing some heat. He got the punt away, and it's a dandy. That was a, that was a legitimate try to block. Johnson fields it. Got by the first man, but not the second. And after the 40, maybe the 41-yard line. Org. Alabama by a touchdown, Michigan with a first down on its own 41 yard line. Brady at quarterback. Alabama thought about a blitz, they back out of it. Brady with a play fake, tosses it out to his fullback. Shea fumble out of bounds. Well, both offenses have had fumbles that have gone out of bounds on the first possession, second half. Pickup of only two on that pass play. Play action, Brady, look out. He got away from one, got away from another, and threw it downfield and got rid of it. Boy, that was a nifty bit of footwork by Tom Brady, who didn't go down. Well, this was going to be a play action uh, pass, and Rashid blitzing. You don't want to have a play action pass on a blitz. They had a receiver down the field, single coverage. He had a shot at him, but with the blitz and Rashid in there, it just blew the whole thing right up. Brady's dance step saved Michigan about 10 yards. Yeah. If you're a quarterback at the line of scrimmage and you have that play called, you like to get out of it if you read a blitz. Third down and eight. Shea, the fullback in motion, and Brady from the gun. Here comes a blitz from the corner. He goes that way, and he's got Terrell in the open field. David Terrell inside the 20. Michigan touchdown. Fifty seven yards Brady to Terrell and that's been the hookup twice for Michigan. Alabama blitzes you leave single coverage. There goes a blitz right here. You got single coverage on the outside. Man to man coverage. Brady does a nice job of finding a slot buying some time and a poor tackle on the outside by Lewis. And that's a career-long reception for Terrell. A point away from tying it up. Epstein does. Just like that, Lloyd Carr told Lynn Swan, we're going to have to open up the offense. They did. They scored a 57-yard touchdown, and we are dead even in Miami. Tied at 14.
That's where most of our crew spent last night. South Beach. <laughs> yeah. Some of us behaved ourselves. Uh -huh. the sights and sounds of South Beach. Nothing like it. I understand you went out on the beach. Uh, I was on the beach. Huh? I wasn't in a traffic jam like that last night. Tied at 14 now. Epstein's kick high and short. Richards going to feel this one at the 12 yard line. Got to the 20. Got away. Nice return by Richard out to the 27 yard line. Epstein's the guy that knocked him out of bounds. Well, Brad, Mike DeBoer, the offensive coordinator for Michigan, said the first half we were concerned about protecting the quarterback. He felt like they got it fixed in the, in the second quarter, so he said we're going to open it up. And here's a great example. They get the good blocking. They get the ball to Dave Turner. Now watch Marcus Knight, 85. Here's a heads-up play by not making a block, not getting the clip. Great job just letting the guy go. And keep in mind, this guy was a young man from Alabama who went to Michigan. Boy, and that takes some guts. And he's playing in his second game against the team from his native states. Watts got away from one. Sets, fires back across the field. Alexander across the 40. And it's a first down Alabama. Pick up of 13. Things are starting to pick up a little bit. I think both offenses now know what they can do and what they can't do against these dominant defenses. Little play action. Watts does a great job getting away from Hall. This was designed to go the whole way, the throwback to the to the halfback after you fake to it. Watch his three for three, Bob, now including that toss. He's alternated series with the Zao the entire game. Each quarterback has a touchdown. Again, the quick snap count, play action. He rolls and throws and finds Freddie Millings. And a nice open field tackle because that guy can always take off on you. Only a pickup of about four. Second and six. Antonio Carter in motion from the Bama backfield. They're going to get him the ball. And he's out near midfield about a yard shy of a first down. Cato June made the tackle. It's going to bring up third down a long yard. You know that national championship game on Tuesday night, the BCS, everybody was writing about it, yeah. criticizing it. You know, it's worked the, the last two years. Right. You, know, you got the right two teams in the game, and uh, it should be a heck of a ball game. Alabama fans are thinking that they might have a crack at being in the big game next year. And obviously, so is Michigan. Two clubs here, one looking for its 11th win, one looking for its 10th. And here's Sean Alexander busting it into the secondary. He might take it. Alexander is gone. Touchdown, Alabama. Is he special or what? 50 yards of special on that one. Oh boy, now we got something working here. Alabama back in front. He broke three or four tackles and then just outran the fastest guys on the defense. Power uh, and speed. 132 yards, 50 yards, the last gallop. Flugner for the extra point. And he's got it up and through. Eighth 100 yard game this year for that young man. 17 carries, 132 yards. That one, his third touchdown of the night. It's Alabama 21, Michigan 14. On the kick return from the eight. And he got cut down as he got to the 25. Let's take you back to that last touchdown run again. It's a beauty. Cuthbert and Hogan. Right there, he's got the ball in the right hand, and all three defenders try to tackle him from that side, and they all slide off. And then to shed those tacklers, and as you said, just outrun the secondary. That's a pretty good combination running. So now let's see if Michigan can answer again. They had tied it up on the long touchdown pass. Brady, 14 of 18 tonight. Two touchdowns to Terrell. And now his offense works from the 25-yard line. Play action. Wants to throw the screen back to the near side of the fullback and does. Oh. And Alabama's seen that too many well, times. Well, you can't now. fake and then throw it. I mean, once you fake, that just pulls everybody over there. And then you go ahead and throw it over there. They've got a running start. <laughs> Alabama so fast on defense. 
Trying to get the ball to Shea, number 36. He wasn't out where he thought he was supposed to be. If he would have gotten out a little bit further, could have given it to him the first time he faked it at him. That was Reggie Grimes that dropped Shea in his tracks. Big defensive tackle who had a touchdown in the SEC championship game on an interception. Second and ten, some movement. Looked like Chris Zeman came out of his stance. I think Alabama is finished with blitzing. The last series, they blitzed him one time and sacked that one him. Killed him. The second time they blitzed, they gave up a touchdown. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Five yards. Still Tom down. Brady. Trying to bring him back again here in the second half. Throws it back to Thomas, and again, all wrapped up by Miguel Merritt. That outside linebacker senior out of Hopkinsville, Tennessee, has had himself a game. Yeah, the short stuff is not working. The screens and the crossing stuff, you're better off just staying outside one-on-one -on -one with these guys. You're not going to fool the speed of Alabama. They're sitting back in zones. I think that's the best thing for them to do and not blitz. Michigan's got too much speed on the outside. And so long yardage again on third down. Third and 17. They've got to get it all the way out to the 35-yard line to pick up a first. They haven't done a good job on third down tonight. Brady, pump fakes, steps up, steps down. Sacked at the 10-yard line. Cornelius Griffin. And Merritt's there to help him. You shouldn't get sacked with a three-man line in a rush of only three guys. Griffin tied for the team lead in sacks coming in. And just got another piece of one there. Three-man line. Brady needs to find, find an opening to buy some time. Nice kick. Freddie Millens back pedals to the 38. Straight ahead he goes. Freddie Millens cuts outside. He's got great speed. He's gone. At the 40. Forget about it. Millens down the sideline. Alabama touchdown. 62 yards. We said to start the second half, you just expected sometime number 15 would have a statement. I think he just made it. He broke open the SEC championship game with a with a run, and he may just have broken this one open too. 62-yard punt return, his second punt return for a touchdown this year. And the extra point is up and good. Michigan. Now trailing by two touchdowns again. Here's another look. The, long, the further you kick the ball, the more dangerous he is. He looks for red shirts, and he's got a ton of them. Jones, number 19, gets a nice block that springs him. So electrifying when he gets his hands on the ball in a variety of ways in this Alabama offense. But on special teams, he shows how special he is again. And, and Brad, and Brad, he came to Alabama on the promise that they would open up the offense. He was looking at Alabama, thinking about going to Florida. He should start Bill, Mississippi. And he bought into the promise that Alabama was going to open up the offense. They did. But keep in mind, number 15, by virtue of his talent, has also helped to open up the offense by plays like that. Well, well said, Swanner. You're right. He was the MVP of the SEC championship game and only caught one pass as a starting wide receiver. It's what he did uh, elsewhere. We and, haven't seen, that and, and we haven't seen him at quarterback, yeah. I think, maybe one time tonight. Yep. So Bearden's got it teed up. Big plays. Sean Alexander's 50-yard run, and then the punt return by Millens is a difference in the second half. High short kick, fielded at the 15-yard line, and brought up the sideline by Kevin Bryant up to about the 27-yard line. First down, Michigan. Now they're in a hole at the 28-yard line, trailing by two touchdowns. Brady comes up firing just off the fingertips of Terrell. That would have been a big gainer out to midfield. Reggie Miles was there. But this is what Michigan has to do. This is their best shot of moving the ball and scoring points. 
Terrell going to run a skinny post. Just off his fingertips. Should have caught it. Yeah, probably. Should have caught it. Second down, Michigan. 8-17 remaining in the third quarter. Brady, the quick drop, fires out Terrell. This time he's got him. Diving out across the 35. He didn't get the first down. He's a couple yards shy. It'll bring up third down and two. Brady to fire out. And this is complete for a first down. Back to Terrell on the other side. So slowly, Michigan working it down the field. Seven minutes, 33 seconds remaining in the quarter. Tom Brady in his final appearance in a Michigan quarterback. There's what he's done so far tonight. A lot of short passes behind the line and 15 yards or less. And where, they're, where they're getting things done is down the field. Yep, those two over 15 were both touchdowns to David Terrell. One of 27, one of 57. Brady from the gun. Fire short again on a quick out. Nice move over there by Terrell to pick up a little bit of extra yardage out across the 46-yard line. Milo Lewis ran him out. Terrell came in with 61 catches to lead the club in receiving. And almost 900 yards through the air as well. Just a sophomore, he has played defense in seven of the Michigan 11 games. In fact, he played a lot against Purdue. He, uh, I think he played something like 45 snaps on the defensive side. Second down and three. Terrell's over 100 yards receiving now. Brady's going deep the other side. Just overshot. Marquise Walker. Like the call, good coverage. Bailey number 13 is a, is a nickel back, a dime back that comes in against three and four wide receivers, and he had good coverage. So Brady looks to the sideline. You saw Henson with the signal of the play. And on the season, the Michigan receivers. Here's what they've done. The most yards combined by a Michigan wide receiver duo when you consider some of the great ones, Jamani Toomer and Mercury Hayes, who had the previous mark. That's pretty good company. Brady to throw. Down the middle he goes to his fullback, Shea, and he's got a first down at the 40-yard line. Pick up a 14. By the way, Terrell going over 100 yards. That's five 100-yard games this season. That ties the great AC, Anthony Carter, in 82, and Ty Streets in 98. Uh, Aaron Shea is a fullback, you know, coming into this ball game. He only had 11 rushes for 30 for uh, 31 yards, but he came into this ball game with 31 receptions. He is critical to this offensive team's passing success, Brad. And they go back to the ground game. Swanee and Thomas, who's really been a non-factor on the ground tonight, picks up about a yard. 16 carries is all for, uh, 16 yards rather, on 10 carries for Anthony Thomas. Yeah, I think Alabama coming in number two in the nation in uh, rushing defense. I think some people question that. Some of the teams that they had played in yep. the SEC don't doesn't run the ball too well. I think uh, we're seeing a pretty tough uh, run defense here tonight. Everybody up close for Alabama this time. A second down and eight. They back out of the blitz. Brady fires. Terrell's got another one. Yeah. Down to the 20. First down, Michigan. This one he catches. Right in front of Gerald Dixon, who had decent coverage. But Terrell used his body well, went up, and snatched it. Well, when the quarterback sees one-on-one -on -one coverage out here and you're just going to have a skinny post up here, you like that combination. Get deep, throw it to the inside. That's the same thing that Terrell dropped the other side about three or four or five plays earlier. So Terrell got a first down for Michigan right at the 20-yard line. Brady fires out to him again. Made a move at the 15, the 10. He's in again. Touchdown, Michigan. That's three from Brady to Terrell. And Michigan bounces right back into the game. Alabama comes back with a blitz. Lewis out there by himself again. He's a good coverage guy, but he needs to work on his tackling. Yep. Epstein for the point after. 
Just like that, Michigan back within a touchdown. A lot of football left. A lot of football in that young fella tonight. Two remaining in the third quarter. Michigan with a touchdown has cut the lead to a touchdown. 28-21 tied. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and Freddie Millens with you from Pro Player Stadium in the 66th FedEx Orange Bowl. And Freddie Millens back waiting on it. The kick coming up from Epstein. Last time they tried to keep it away from him, they kicked it short to Arvin Richard. This time they kick deep, and it will be Freddie Millens. Three yards in, he's going to have to take a knee. That time Epstein got all of it, which he's done a pretty good job of this year. Let's go back to the touchdown, Bob. Let's go back, and this is what Brady saw. He sees a linebacker here, a linebacker in the line, and another linebacker there. And he sees his number one receiver one-on-one -on -one out here on the outside. Blitz, single coverage, just get it out there, miss tackle. You got your favorite receiver. 61 receptions, as Brad said, coming into the game. Three touchdowns and counting. Which ties an Orange Bowl record. There's his numbers. Three touchdowns. And here's another guy with three touchdowns, but he barely got that handoff or pitch, whatever you want to call it. Rob Reedus finally makes a hit. And that one was an ugly looking uh, play. I think I think um, I think Andrew Zhao may have gotten stepped on. He just barely got him the ball. There's Renus. That's exactly what yeah, happened. Renus shoved a Hogan back and stepped on uh, Zhao. Blew up the whole thing. That's a double whammy by Renus here. He got a good piece of a really good center. Knocked him into the quarterback and then helped out on the tackle. Renus for a guy that doesn't get hardly any sacks and make hardly any tackles has so much of an impact in a ball game. All the Alabama coaches offensively were talking about it. And now Zhao has trouble with a snap from center, but he's still got it to Freddie Millens. Millens, oh, what a hit at the 25-yard line by James Whitley. Millens never saw him coming. That's what you call getting ear home. <laughs> Man alive. And then all the zebras come and talk to you and say, just relax. Now. He said, I want to get a piece of it. Look at this right out here. It's going to be a, a quick screen. The first, the first two guys go down and block, and then they say, all right, Freddie. <laughs> he got away from him once, but he didn't get away from him twice. Freddie, take the play off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Third down at four. Best thing about Alabama, they got him around for a couple more years. That's He's right. only a sophomore. Zow's had trouble with a couple of the snaps and the shotgun tonight, including that last play. That's Bowen's in motion. Zow in the pocket. Finds an open man, but he dropped the ball. It was Antonio Carter. It would have been a first down. Didn't hold it. And now Alabama has got to give it up. Michigan's defense does its job. Well, Michigan is used to being in this position, as we've talked about. Being behind, coming from behind, that's not the quarterback's fault. That should have been a first down. Alabama should have been still on the field offensively. Might have been the best pass Zaz thrown all night. The guy dropped it. Look out. High kick. Johnson with a fair catch will take it just inside his own 40-yard line. And 28. 21, Alabama in front, and Michigan got the ball back, Swanee. Yes, and that means we got to watch out for number one, David Terrell. He has been the workhorse for this offense. He, is un he has been unbelievable so far. They've thrown it at him 10 times, Lynn, and he's caught eight of them for 144 yards and three touchdowns. Brady going to him again. Diving attempt couldn't hold that one. The pass thrown well behind him. Yeah, I think you're right, Swanee, and I, I always felt like when I had a receiver that was having success and having a big night, that he wanted the ball, and if you got it to him, he would make something happen, and he would get open to allow you to get him the ball. That's right, Bob, and, 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 and you know this young man has got great stamina because, as you pointed out earlier, he played a lot of defense a year, played a big game against Purdue, so he likes this. He likes being the center. He likes having this kind of role in the ballgame. Michigan down a touchdown with 344 left in the third. Try to change that and tie it up again. Brady to throw, swings it out to the fullback, Shea. Broke one tackle and backpedals his way out near midfield. Good tough run after... The catch, and it's going to bring up third down and short. Third and three. Brady 
Fires complete. First down at the 47 yard line. Sean Thompson is tight end. Catches his first pass of the night. Well, both teams have told us this week that they're just scouting out the Orange Bowl. They'd like to come back for, our, on our, for an encore next year when the championship game of the BCS is here at the Orange Bowl. Yep. And Mike DeBose said at the luncheon thing the other day, we'll just accept the invitation to come back next year right now if you don't mind. Well, I want to tell you, I, you know, <laughs> they, they'd be in the hunt right now. Yep, they would. The way they're playing the last uh, five or six ball games. Brady fires. Guess who? Nice move by Terrell. And another move inside the 40. Is he hot or what? He is feeling it. He says his favorite Michigan athlete of all time is Anthony Carter. And he's wearing the same number, and he's doing AC proud right now. Top of your screen. He's going to do a little stop, get him the ball and some space. Bailey doesn't tackle him, but he got some help from his friends, and that's all Bailey wanted to do, just slow him up. His numbers get more and more impressive as the game goes on. Brady drops, going to fire long for the other wide receiver, just off the fingertips of Marcus Knight. That was close. Gerald Dixon, the true freshman back there, Knight got his fingers on it and just couldn't quite hold it. Should have caught it. A kid from Sylacauga, Alabama, <laughs> wanted to have that one. Oh, you got that right. There's only one Alabama player on the Michigan team, and it's this one right here. Marcus Knight, perfect throw. Should have caught it. He said when it came time to sign that national letter of intent, he had two pieces of paper, Alabama and Michigan, and he had to think about it and pray about it. And he said, the morning I signed it, I still wasn't sure. Something just told me Michigan. Here's a crossing pattern to the fullback again, and Shea's in the secondary. And all the way down, he rumbles to the 15-yard line. Swanee said a couple minutes ago he's an integral cog to this offense. He just went 24 yards, first down Wolverine. Yeah. He's, he's in the backfield right here. He's going to make a move to the outside and then come back inside. He's like an H-back. A couple years ago, he was a tight end for Michigan. Last year and this year, he's a fullback. A little swing to the outside. Good feet. Now it's Anthony Thomas straight up the middle. Now the run works because you've got Alabama back on their heels guarding against the pass that you've heard them against. Now you come with the run. Depending on where they spot it, it's going to be first and goal, I think. It's amazing how, how the passing game, which we talked about in the Giddell game solutions, opens up the run. Guys, remember when we sat around the table with the Michigan players? One thing they told us that I was very interested in was the fact that they felt that they could wear down Alabama. They felt that they were in such great shape that during the course of this ball game, if they were able to just pound the ball, pound the ball, go after them, they felt that eventually in the fourth quarter they could wear this Alabama football team down. Right now, the Alabama defense is not as fast as they were in the first quarter. Good point. And one of the, one of the other things that we said in our game solutions early on is that Alabama defensively wanted to get off the field as soon as they could because they didn't want to be in this situation. This big Michigan offensive line, the big fullback, the big tailback, no. trying to stop them in the fourth quarter. What is it about this Michigan team? They don't come to play until they get in a the hole. They're trying to even that hole off. Down to maybe the two-yard line or the three is Anthony Thomas. It's going to be second down and goal. They got the first down just by the tip of the football. And Thomas got him even closer. They're going to put it right at the three. Michigan's fourth quarter comebacks well documented. We've been talking about it all night. They did it at Notre Dame. They did it in Indiana. And they did it against Penn State. They were down 14 points just a couple of minutes ago. Here in this now, one. They're knocking on the Alabama door. Second and goal at the three. Thompson the tight end in motion. The give, no play fake by Brady to the end zone, incomplete. Bill Seymour, the tight end, had his hands and couldn't hold it. Nice play, perfect execution, except he just couldn't keep his hands on it. Saw so this play the other day at practice, too. They have several different tight ends. Going to fake, now he's going to look to the end zone. 
So close. A lot of these, uh, lot of these catches. Marcus Knight just dropping one earlier. All these balls are balls that could be caught. But uh, this is not pro football. This is uh, <laughs> gonna make mistakes. This is college football, student athletes. A little drop some. Third and goal, Michigan. Trying to tie the game. Thomas, touchdown, Wolverine. Nice call. Finally, Anthony Thomas has something to say about this football game. His run got him down to first and goal, and his four yarder got him in the end zone. Nice call. Mike DeBoard, the offensive coordinator, had Alabama sitting back on their heels. Third down, came with a running play. Three yard touchdown, and now the extra point by Epstein to try to tie it again. And he does. We thought maybe Michigan had put itself in a hole too deep to climb out of. But Anthony Thomas has changed our mind. It's 28 to 28. Backus and Hutchinson, Thompson, Shea, the fullback, and the A train. And the train just made a stop in the end zone. And for him, Another productive season. That is his 17th rushing touchdown of 99 slash 2000. High atop pro players day, and this is a 66 FedEx Orange Bowl, and it has turned into a beauty. And Lloyd Carr and Mike DeBose, one trying to win his 10th game for a third straight year in Lloyd Carr. Mike DeBose trying to win number 11. And both. Trying to win this BCS Bowl game and look ahead to next year to maybe even brighter things. Who knows? Man, Celtics at eight, followed by the Spurs and Jazz. With 12.26 remaining in the fourth quarter, the Alabama defense dodged a bullet as they forced a Wolverine fumble on their own goal line. As we continue our coverage, we rejoin the game now with the score still tied at 28. Six minutes, 26 seconds remain in the fourth quarter, and the Alabama offense has the ball, second down and three from their own 33-yard line. Second down and three, Alabama. Looking to put a drive together to try to win the 66th Orange Bowl. Here's a toss to Bohannon. Puts a stiff arm out there and gets run out of bounds. Looks like he might have the first down, though. It'll be close. Let's see where they spot it is a first down. Chris Samuels can only look out and be a 317-pound cheerleader right now. Alabama had a two touchdown advantage in this game at one point. Michigan erased that. Sean Alexander's back in there. Watts rolling, looking to throw, and does and completes it. Jamari Buchanan makes the catch. Maybe just a little bit short of the first down. That's his first catch of the night. Nice throw and catch. It's an overloaded, unbalanced line to the right side. He's got all kinds of blocking on that way. Roll out, have the outside guy run a deep out and come back. Then Watts outside the pocket. Good Receiver throw. goes down about 20 and breaks down to about 15 and good completion. And now they got second down and short. They can go back to the ground game if they want. High backfield behind Watts in motion. And there's one of those big tackles. The young fellow's moving again. Lannis Baxley. Having a tough night. There'll be better days ahead for the redshirt freshman out of Waynesboro. Mm -hmm. But tonight, some struggles. But Mike DeVose said that these five offensive linemen that started for him all year, the backups didn't play a lot because they were redshirt freshmen. And these kids that were in front of them were so good. Ellington yeah. was playing a lot and playing well. But if you have an injury to one, well, then you have to play these guys that you haven't played much. 26 penalties between the two teams and a season high continuing to be added on to for Alabama. 16 tonight now. Second down and six. Watch from the gun. Carter in motion. They'll keep it on the ground and a draw play to Alexander, and he's got a first down and more. 
Down to the 49-yard line. It's fun to watch him run. Yes, it is. He just kind of weaves. Whatever he needs to do, if he needs to, he's a little shifty, he moves his feet away from you. If he needs to power over you, watch the way he moves his feet, one side to the other. Hurt his ankle against Tennessee, as did Zhao, and then he missed a game, and that probably took him out of Heisman consideration, but certainly he is one of the very best skill position players in college football. He's got such good footwork and such power. Tough to tackle. First down, Alabama at the Michigan 49. Tied at 28, under five to play. And about a one yard, maybe two pickup before James Hall drops Alexander. James Hall in the tackle. That clock winding down. We said with the team that had the ball last win this football game, it may come down to that. 158 yards. Touchdowns of five, six, and 50. Alabama has rushed for 193 yards. Michigan rushed for only 37. Four wide receivers at the top. Empty backfield for Watts. Here he goes, but he's tripped up. Great shoestring tackle by Ian Gold. Huge play by Gold because there was nothing but but open pastures ahead of him. He had about 20 yards in front of him. That would have been a huge run by the quarterback, you can bet. Right there, the speed and quickness of Ian Gold prevented like a 15 or 20 yard game. Now it's third down and long. Alabama 30% of their third downs tonight, third and nine. Everybody, I think, cheering for both teams on their feet right now. Watts in trouble. Now he takes off, flags down, and he's going to pick up a first down, but I think it's coming back with a holding call. The referee, Chuck McFerrin, has thrown his flag tonight more than he probably has thrown it in any game all season. He's going to have to have rotator cuff surgery when this <laughs> thing's over. <laughs> we get a new flag. That's going to wear out. Yeah, they'll bring it all back. Boy, that was a nice run by Watts. It was. On a run beyond the line, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still third down. Mike DeBose looking down the barrel of a 17th penalty of his team tonight. This might be on Sean Alexander. Let's check. See right here. Yeah. Yeah, he's pulling. He's going for his flag. I don't know. I couldn't see anything really definitive. Yep. 19 yard penalty. Now it's back to the 33 yard line. That was from the spot of the foul. Yep. Trips to the near side. Here comes a blitz on Watts. Look out. Down he goes. The helmet's gone. Whitley came flying in from the secondary. And Michigan's defense comes up with a big yeah. play. Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator, sending his own blitz. Something that Michigan does more than anybody that Alabama has played. Take a look right here, these two guys, but it's going to be Whitley that gets there. Remember, he almost took Zao's head off earlier in this half. And he actually took Watts' helmet off on that one. If you're going to blitz somebody, blitz somebody with speed that can get there. Morgan to punt. Not the greatest kick again. Might take a good bounce, though. It's going to take a great roll for Alabama. It's hard to find an expert. And a guy that's been the comeback kid for him all year, licking his fingers and his chops, maybe, if he can pull out another come-from-behind victory from the 31-yard line. Brady, plenty of time. Goes back to the left side. And it's complete. Out to Walker. And don't forget, Michigan had a chance to take the lead for the only time tonight in their previous possession in this quarter. They got down close and fumbled in the end zone. Now they're looking for another chance to get back there to at least get a field goal try. Hurry up, offense. Here's a blitz. Brady over the middle. Oh, he had a wide open. 
open receiver in Marcus Knight, and he dropped it. Yeah. He saw the blitz coming and wanted to get rid of it before he got sacked. And that's the value of the blitz. You don't have as much time. It's close. He dropped that long one down the sideline. There have been a couple that should have been hauled in. And yep. Brady's had good numbers tonight. And it'd be unbelievable that everybody held on to what they should have. Third down. A long two. Four wide outs for Brady. Looks to his left and goes that way and is complete. First down and out of bounds of the 45. Big, he's Walker. Big first down there. Third down, you need to pick up a first down. All he does is get his outside receiver to go down and break to the outside. And that first down right at the 45. Again from the shotgun is Brady. Stands in, waits, throws incomplete, and took a hit after he let go of that one. Cornelius Griffin got some pressure on him. He waited a long time before he let that one go. Well, it was a slow developing route that he was waiting on. But Michigan still with 1.23 left has a chance to try to get it down in field goal range to win. Flag down, free play. And the pass completed. I think they'll take the penalty instead. That's about a four-yard pass play and a five-yard pickup on the penalty. It was Kendall Moorhead, I believe, that jumped in the neutral zone, which would be a new Orange Bowl record for one team in penalties. That would be 18. 1939, Tennessee had 17. And Defense the year 2000, the offside at the snap. Alabama has 18. Penalty. Still second down. And Alabama is getting tired, as Swanee talked about earlier, yeah. I think. And the longer that defense stays on the field, I mean, I, we're talking mainly about the big defensive linemen. There's Grimes and Griffin and the bigger guys, uh, the guys that have to rush the passer. They slow down first. So a second down and five at midfield. Here comes a blitz. Brady fires complete. He got that one to Marcus Knight. And he held on. the Alabama native holding on to the maybe the biggest pass yeah. play of the night. He held on to that long enough. They're going to put it down at the 35. Stop the clock momentarily. Here's another look. Marcus Knight has been their big play guy. That's a good catch. Yes, he had is. possession, even though he had it against his body. And then it came loose once he hit the ground. That was a good call. Keep in mind, Aiden Epstein. Has hit from 56 yards this year. Brady on play action. Now it's a tight end. They won't have to worry about a long field goal. They're already inside the 20. If Sean there, Thompson. If there was ever a staple of the Michigan offense, it's that play right there. Fake to one side, roll away, and hit the tight end coming across. Timeout taken by Alabama. As Thompson, the big sophomore, cartwheels his way inside the 20. And Michigan now very much in scoring range with 49 seconds to play. We talked about Epstein. 56 yards is his best. And they're way, way inside of that range for him. He had a 42-yard field goal against Ohio State that was big. Our FedEx delivery of the game for Freddie Millens, but here's a guy that could still deliver Michigan yep. its 10th win. Brady, last game. Back. Last game for Tom Brady, fifth-year senior, going out in the last game for his offensive coordinator, Mike DeBoer. We wish Mike the best with his new head coaching position. He's taking a position at uh, head coach at Western Michigan. Central Michigan, Central excuse Michigan. me, Central. He told you if you said Western, he was going to be all over you. I know. He's got the chance. I was just kidding. There he is. There's Mike. Scott Leffler right there next to him has been a graduate assistant. In fact, was a quarterback at Michigan and hurt his shoulder and was spent the time in the coaching office. And uh, Mike DeBoer talked to my son, Brian, and says, Brian says, who helped you the most when you were at Michigan? Beside the coaches, he said, Scott Leffler. So Scott Leffler is going with him, and also Jason Carr 
Lloydson. Lloydson, that's right. He's going to be on the staff. A lot of great connections. Central Michigan. Tom Brady, almost a career high so far. 344 and 3. He's within about a pass completion of his career best. And it comes in his last game. First and 10. 49 seconds left. Michigan trying to get in position for a field goal. And they just give it to Anthony Thomas to go up the middle and try to put it in the middle of the field. Kenny King made the stop. Remember, Michigan took over at their own 31 with 2.05 left. See, I think. I, now I think this is not a time to get too conservative. I think you have to 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 run plays where you're not going to turn the ball over obviously but this kick by no means is a gimme. If they're playing single coverage on the outside and you can throw a ball into the end zone I would take a shot at it. Brady comes all the way out to talk to Lloyd Carr and now hustles back and you see the play clock They'll never get this off they should take a timeout. He comes up quickly. And he gets to the middle of the field on a quarterback sneak. Yeah, that's it. They worked on that in practice the other day. And the whole line moves over to the left. So you play for four hours in the 66th Orange Bowl, and it lands on maybe the smallest pair of shoulders on the football field. Lloyd Carr just shook hands with his kicker and said, Go win it for us, will you? So Epstein will find a spot out there. He showed you his numbers from the regular season. A sophomore out of Cardiff, California. He's going to have a chance to be a hero. And there's the guy that definitely was a hero tonight, Tom Brady, along with David Terrell. Sean Alexander. Yep. Great game in his final appearance in the Crimson uniform. It's down to one play. If he makes it, Michigan goes home with its 10th victory for the third straight season, something they haven't done since the Schembechler days, 76 through 78. If he misses it, they go to overtime in Miami. They're going to spot this. At the 26 yard line, Tom Brady is the holder. After all the great passes he's thrown tonight, putting the football on the ground will be his most important task. And now Alabama will try to ice the kicker a bit. This is what happened earlier today. Florida calling a timeout with Michigan State looking for a final play to kick to win. And the ice melted. As Michigan State won that game. And now Epstein continues to warm up. He's the loneliest guy in the stadium right now. Nobody's within 15 yards of him. As you know, he's at the 26 yard line. Sometimes I think it may, works in, in, in the opposite direction. I think it gives him more time to settle down. So Alabama, the SEC champion, Mike DeBose, the SEC coach of the year, after a strange beginning to the season and offseason. His contract has been re-extended the two years that were taken off. He has the Alabama people excited about football again. I was saying the other day, is when they talk when they talk about SEC championships, lately they've only talked about Tennessee and Florida. Now they're going to start talking about Alabama again. So Rob Reynes to snap, Tom Brady to hold, Hayden Epstein to try to win it for Michigan. From 36 yards. The kick is blocked. And now Brady throws a pass. We're going to overtime. Penalty markers on the play. Chris Horn, I think, is the guy that blocked it. Again, a flag down. An eligible downfield decline overtime. It's the ineligible receiver on Brady's attempted pass. <laughs> Alabama comes up with a miracle block on the final play of the game. Right here. Phillip Weeks. Number 32. Nice vertical leap. The kick blocked. And we're still tied at 28. Would you pay $35 for one pound?
overtime at the 66th FedEx Orange Bowl. A first for the bowl. Not a first for these teams. Remember, Alabama beat Florida in overtime of the regular season. It's Michigan on offense first at the 25 yard line. Brady, nice play fake. Sets up, fires across the middle. His tight end's got it. Sean Thompson, touchdown. Just like that, one play, 25 yard touchdown. Great pitch and catch. Talk puts, about calling the right play and dialing it up perfectly. Puts the pressure. This is the staple I talked about. The Michigan play. If they had one play they had to run, it would be this one. Extra point now. All important by Epstein, who had the field goal blocked at the end of regulation. Should be a formality, and it is. One play into overtime. Michigan takes the lead for the first time tonight. Alabama comes out and blitzes again. That means single coverage in the secondary. Watch the linebackers blitz. Here's the tight end as he's going to come across. Brady will roll, fake the run, and roll to his right. And right here, he's going to hit the receiver. Good throw and catch. Cox can't make the play. Touchdown, Michigan. And a career high for Tom Brady in both yardage and now touchdown. His fourth touchdown pass of the night. And I understand, Bob, the theory in terms of when you win the, the coin toss going into overtime, but as I pointed out prior to this, it's a fact that the defense was on the field the whole time. Prior to overtime, they were pretty tired. That's a good point, Swanee. Here's a give on a little draw play to Sean Alexander from the shotgun formation, and he got about four. Wasn't it in the first play against Florida in overtime when Alabama, they gave it to Sean Alexander? Maybe yep. not the first play, but yeah, he's he the one. Right he away. ran it in for a touchdown. Yep. I'd give it to him, too. So now it's second down at six in overtime. Michigan leading for the first time tonight. And if their defense can come up with three more plays. They'll take home the Orange Bowl trophy to Ann Arbor. You can, you can, you can make first downs now in this situation. And get a first down at the 15. Right. And now timeout taken by Zhao, and that's the only timeout Alabama's got. Four teams remain in the. Soon to be a four hour football game. Michigan in overtime leads Alabama. Tide's got it second and six at the Michigan 21. They need a touchdown. Zai lost one wide open touchdown, Carter. Great play fake to Alexander, and he hooks up with a freshman. There's a little bit of that Alabama offense we talked about at the beginning of the game. Nice call by Charlie Stubbs, the offensive, uh, the quarterback coach. Fakes it to the uh, franchise, Sean Alexander. Everybody comes up to make the tackle and easy touchdown. That pass couldn't get to Carter fast enough. Flugner now to try to send this game further. Did he miss it? He did. Michigan wins in overtime. Alabama won a game in the regular season against Florida because of a missed Gator extra point. Fate has dealt them an ugly blow in this Orange Bowl. Not the way you want this game to end. What a game it was. And a dramatic finish as Michigan wins its 10th game of the year. Tom Brady, four touchdown passes, three of them to Terrell as the guy that led the way. Here's the final play in overtime. Luger just pushed it to the right. Former walk-on, now one of the captains. You know how terrible he feels. Good snap and good hold. Wasn't to be. And Mike DeVos 
They've had a great year. Yes, they have. They've, They've had, had a smile. great year. Nobody. The jubilation yeah. of the Michigan sideline and Lloyd Carr as they win their 10th game against two losses. Alabama 10 and 3 to finish. And both these teams will be in the thick of things to try to get back here to Pro Player Stadium next year. In overtime, Michigan wins it in a massive humanity of blue and maize down there with a winning coach, I think, is Lynn Swan. Swanee? Yeah, Brad, we're right here with Lloyd Carr. Lloyd, a phenomenal second half for your football team. Well, it, Lynn, it's a great football game, and, and I, you know, it's a shame somebody has to lose. And uh, as happy as I am to win, I, I hate to see it end the way it did with a, with a missed extra point. But I, uh, I am so proud of the guys on this football team because uh, if you're lesser caliber men, you, you got a lot of chances to quit in there. And they never quit. They never uh, kept fighting. And they've done that all year long. You know, I'll be glad to get rid of them because uh, I don't have much heart left. Well, Coach, congratulations. I know you're not glad to get rid of these guys. They're terrific. Congratulations to you. Thank you, Lynn.